Hello, my dear students. Welcome back to the lecture. So in this lecture, we will see how to take out the slab centering quantities and also the slab concreting quantity. So when I say slab centering quantity, you can see here, all these are my slab centering quantity. See this part, okay, this part, or I'll do it here. You can see all these pieces kept, no? these are the shuttering plates which has been kept. Okay, so this is my centering. Why I'm using the word called as centering? Because for the slab, it is horizontal element. For the beam, it, if it is a vertical element, we call it as a shuttering. For beam, it was shuttering. For column, it was shuttering, right? For footing, it was shuttering because everything was vertical there. But here we are placing it horizontal. So hence, we should call it as a slab centering materials. Okay. So how do you find that? It's very simple. I'll go back to the drawing again. So again, right now I'm in the first floor level layout. Okay. All the slabs has been given here. You can see. How do you find the slab quantity? It's very simple. Uh, first, I'll tell you how to do the numbering. See. Everywhere you can see the slab, there's one slab here, two, three, four, four, right? So what I've done, I've given a number to that. Like this is my first slab. Okay. I've given a name as S1. Similarly, I have given another name. This is S2. This is S3. Okay. Okay. Two times it's written S3. Okay. I'll delete this. Yeah. So this is S3. This slab is S4. Then S5. Then again S6, then again we don't have slab here, this is S7, S8, S9. In this way, I've given the numbering from left to right, from top to, yeah, from top to bottom I've given the name. Okay, you can give anywhere, you can give any name, you can even start naming from here. You can give this is S1, you can give this S2, S3 and all. It depends on you, but uh, we'll follow one procedure. We'll start from the top and we'll go from left to right. So I started from here, so this is my S1. I could have given this one, this as S1, S2, S3, S4, and then S5 here. It all depends on you. Okay, no problem. Now, how do you find the uh, area for this? It's very simple. See, one thing you understand. We had done the beam concreting. You remember? So where was the beam concreting? Where did the beam concreting happen? So this was the beam concreting area, isn't it? We did the beam concrete here. This portion also beam concreting happened. This portion also beam concreting happened. And this portion also beam concreting happened, right? Now, whatever is left out, that is the middle portion. This much will be your slab centering area. Agree with me? In the green color only your slab area will come. Now, how do you find? From the AutoCAD, you take this outer to outer, okay? You take this outer to outer distance. That is from this column outer to this column outer, you take the distance I already taken. It is 4 meter, that is 4000 mm. So length is over. I mean, the breadth is over. Now we come to this part. Now. You take the distance from this outer of this beam. Okay. This beam outer to this beam outer. How much it is? 5,500. You got the length. You got the breadth. If you multiply, you'll get the area. The slab will be always in area because centering quantity of shuttering is in square meter. I'll multiply 4 into 5.5. I'll get the slab centering area. Got it? So practically, if you want to see this, I'll show you here. So this is how it looks practically. So practically, you have a beam here. Okay. You have one beam here. Agree with me. You have another beam running here. Okay. Then you have another beam running here. Then you have another beam running here. Four beams are there. Okay. In between this, whatever you have, I'll put it in a different color in X mark. This portion, whatever you can see. This portion, whatever you can see. Okay. The middle portion. That is your slab centering quantity. So we are trying to find this particular quantity. Okay. You're getting my point. This particular quantity I'm trying to find. I already told you we need to measure the distance. I want to measure the distance from here to here. I'll show you this in a, another slab if you want. Yeah. So here I'll tell you how it has to be done. Already you know that. So this is one slab panel what I have. Okay. I'll start from here. I'll, I'll, I'll take this length from this beam outer to this beam outer. Again, this beam outer to this beam outer. Okay. Both are same breadth. And from this beam outer to this beam outer. Fine. I'll get this length, I'll get this breadth. If I multiply, I'll get the slab centering area. You're getting my point? Very simple. So what I've done in Excel sheet, already I've done all those input. You just have to copy or you just have to do it. Like first floor slab centering. The length is first, I'll go with S1, okay? I've written the name S1. I'll show you where S1 is. Yeah. So this is my S1. So in S1, you tell me what is your length. So S1 is 1.8 meter and this is 1.75 meter. So 1.8 and 1.75. Go to the Excel. I've written 1.8 and 1.75. Now I can come to S2 slab. Where is your S2 slab in the drawing? So this is my 
S2 slab. What is the length? The length of S2 slab is this is 4 meter. This is 5.5 meter. Whichever is bigger, no, you consider that as a length. So I'll consider 5.5 is my length and breadth is 4 meter. It doesn't matter. Answer won't change, but we'll follow this method. So 5.5 is my length and width is 4 meter. You're getting my point? So in this way, everywhere I've done the calculation. And there's one small thing which you need to understand. In some of the slab, they put this X mark. X mark means there is a cutout. Maybe there is a staircase coming. Maybe there is a lift portion coming or you want an opening in that portion. So uh, when you prepare the drawing, you give X mark. That means no slab is coming. So you don't have to consider this area. Whereas you see in this entire slab, this much is cut out. See, this is actual slab. This is actual slab. Okay. This is the actual slab. But in this, but in this slab, this much portion we have cut out. That means there is no slab in this portion. But whereas the remaining portion, you have a slab. Remaining portion, you have a slab. So what I'll do, I'll take this outer to this outer length, which is 1100. And from this outer to this outer, I'll take a length, which is 4.7 meter. For F7, S7, I'll input the same thing in the Excel sheet. Where is my S7? You can see here, 4.7 by 1.1. You're getting my point. So in this way, try to calculate all the areas and try to fill in the Excel sheet. Again, you see here also you have a cutout because if you go to the plan, I don't have a plan right now. Here there is a lift coming. So that is an X. So if there is a lift coming, you will not put a slab. Only in the top slab, in the multi level, you will be having a slab coming in that portion. Okay. So you're getting my point. In this way, you're supposed to take care of all these things and everywhere you do this. Similarly, see these people have shaded something here. You can see this shaded portion. This means that it's a sunken slab. You have one shaded here. There's one other two shaded here. Sunken slab in the sense, in the bathroom portion, when you give the slab, if this is my main slab, okay, this is my ground level slab. My bathroom slab will be at least uh, 200 or 250 mm little down. And this will be bathroom level slab. You're getting my point. So this height will be 250, 250 mm. Why we do that? So that we, we can take the plumbing works and all, because in the bathroom you want water and all. The plumbing line will be taken. Then it will be, uh, uh, then you are going to put, uh, put the brick bats and then you will bring it to this level later. But initially when you do the casting, your main slab will be at this level and sunken slab will be at this level. So wherever this uh, line they are drawn, it's a sunken slab. In the remark, you can write sunken slab. For example, S13 and S14, no? this is 14 and 16. So I'll go to the Excel sheet. S14 is written here. You can make this S14 a sunken slab. Just for your understanding, you can do that. Okay. But there won't be any change in the calculation. Uh, in execution, what will happen? Uh, wherever there is a beam bottom, no? beam, uh, this, if this is my beam, my sunken slab will be at this level. At this level. Okay. It will be attached to your beam bottom. Bottom portion of your slab will be at the beam bottom level. That's it. When you do the execution. Okay. But in quantity estimation, there won't be any changes for the concreting and you know? all. You can do that. 14 and written sunken slab. You can write sunken slab just for your understanding. Okay. Sunken slab. That's it. Okay. And rest all things have filled the value. Now number units, since I'm doing a centering quantity, it will be in square meter. You can. Uh, and I'll drag it everywhere. So yes, 23 slabs are there. Okay. Sunken slab and this number will be one only always. Okay. Number is what now you want to find the area. No. So quantity. All right. So we know we have a length. We have breadth. This depth is not required. You can do dash mark here. Right, dash mark. Wait, it's not coming. Okay, bring it at the center. Make it large, little. Okay, you just fill it in this way. Okay, done. That means there is no depth portion. Now quantity. Quantity, I want to find area. No, So this 1.8 multiply by 1.75. Area, I'll get 3.15. Bring it at the center, increase the font. That's it. One I've done, just copy for others. Okay, copy to get all the answer. You can reduce that size. Yeah, 
done okay then again coming to the total quantity will be equal to 3.15 into number since here only one is there so values won't change yeah done okay this you can reduce fine now uh, first floor slab centering quantity equal to or i can just keep my mouse here go to the option called as auto sum it will get selected enter so 184.60 square meter of a centering is required in your slab simple this is how you are supposed to do it okay all the values i have taken from here you also try to do uh, most of the things what i have done is correct okay see one thing somewhere when i do the calculation in some portion i may miss some value okay so this is the final answer what i'm getting if you're getting same value no problem if you're getting somewhere close to you know like see few few students get around uh, 183 then you say then you tell sir you got 184 i got 184.60 it's okay doesn't matter okay it depends because maybe either i might have made a mistake while taking the value from here okay somewhere here instead of taking this from this end to this end i might have stopped my mouse somewhere here in a hurry and i might have taken this 4208 where actually i should have taken 4255 I might have taken 4208. Usually I have not done most of the things I have double checked it. But in case if something happens, it, it doesn't matter. I don't think that whatever answer you have got is wrong. Uh, okay. So it's okay. See, if there is a huge variation, then it's it is a problem. For example, I got 184. And if you're getting like 183 or 185, it's okay. I got 184. And if you are getting like 150, then huh, then maybe either I might have made mistake or you might have made mistake. But if you're getting very close to this answer, same answer if you get well and good. If not, if you're getting like eight, 183 or 185, doesn't matter. You can go ahead with that. Okay. Slight variation will be there. Okay. Depends how you've taken the values and all. Doesn't matter. Okay. Fine. So the first floor slab centering quantity is done. This you have understood. Now, in this, I'll tell you one more thing, uh, which usually not required, but from site execution point of view, it is required. So this is a first floor slab centering total quantity. Okay. Now, when you do the execution of such slab, when you do the execution on the side, you need to uh, bring in such such uh, plates. These are the plates what we have. These are the centering plates. Okay, you can see this is my centering plate. This is one plate. Okay, this entire thing is one plate. Okay, in this way we try to bring it, and then we try to arrange it. All these things is explained in my construction methodology course where you learned where I taught you step by step how all these things are practically executed. Okay, now. I got the total area, which is 184, but how many plates are required? Because when you put the slab, you put this in terms of this, this thing. Okay. In terms of the centering plates or yeah, centering plates or shuttering plates. So one thing you remember uh, only in the side, because in side, uh, when you see in the side, what happens if you're working on the side, you find this value, this value will not help you. Okay. If you want to procure the steel plates, or if you want to tell the contractor or laborers, you bring this much steel. So that we steel plate so that we can put the slab centering if you tell 184.60 square meter you'll not understand you tell number of plates required so it's very simple calculation i'll tell you the size of this plate whatever we have no the size of this single single plate is usually we get in terms of two feet by three feet it's a two feet by three feet plates is available two feet by three feet yeah two feet by three feet is the length of that plate so I'll convert this in terms of meter. Okay. Two feet, one feet is uh, 300 mm, which is 0.3. So I'll multiply two into 0 0.3. Okay. And uh, this I'll multiply three into 0 0.3. Why 0 0.3? Because one meter is 300 mm and in mm in terms of meter is 0 0.3. So two into 0 0.3 comes out to be 0 0.6 and three into 0 0.3 comes out to be 0 0.9. Okay. Right. So 3 into 0 0.3 comes out to be 0 0.9. 2 into 0 0.3 comes out to be 0 0.6. Fine. Now I'll find the area of the plate only. Okay. Area of plate. Area of the plate. Now again, in your side, see most of the side we use this 2 feet by 3 feet only. In some side, they, they might use 1.5 feet by 3 feet. So in that case, you do the calculation according to that. Okay. I'll find the area now. So area will be 0 0.6 into 0 0.9, which will be 0 0.54. Sorry, yeah, 0 0.54, 0 0.6 into 0 0.9, 96 of 54, it is 0 0.4 square meter. So one area, one plate will cover 0 0.54 square meter. Okay, 
that's it we got this answer no now what is the total quantity we had total quantity total quantity is 184 i'll write here only number of plates required if you want you can do this also excel sheet we usually don't do but just for your understanding i'm doing it okay therefore number of because when you're doing the quantity estimation you don't have to do this because it's only required from side point of view and for the contractor it is required number of centering plates required but still let us do that okay if somebody asks you in the interview if this much area is there how much centering plate uh, you you need and all okay in that case this will help you okay so what we'll do equal to sign the total area i'll divide it by uh, area of plate that is 0 0.54 i'll do okay that's it so it comes out to be 341 so 341 i can say 3 342 numbers okay number of this i'll write in numbers done finish 342 numbers of the centering plate is required you're getting my point so in this way you can uh, do uh, quantity estimation uh, number of plates required will be 342 numbers is required okay understood yeah so you can even make one more row and do that i mean what i'm trying to tell is see what i see whenever you do the excel sheet no, make sure you're doing it in a more better way now i divided this by 0 0.54 that means the area is for two feet by three feet now if tomorrow if your plate size is let us say three feet by three feet in that case this calculation will not work out so instead of that you can do one more one more small changes what you can do we input this thing here that is plate size plate size was how much uh, 0 0.6 by 0 0.9 you're getting my point zero points right that is what we had plate size i'll take it the center okay you don't have to do just see what i'm trying to do now what you do instead of dividing it by 0 0.54 you open the bracket and multiply this the more the excel you do you get the same answer but now what will happen now let us say instead of this size somebody told no i'll give you 0 0.5 by 0 0.5 size now you tell me finish you'll get 738 you're getting my point if you don't if you're not given this formula if you're directly divided by 0 0.54 then again you need to go and change here instead of that you can make it more easier so just change the value if somebody tomorrow tells no i have a size of 0 0.2 by 0 0.2 only my centering plate size tell me how many plates are required fine take I require 4,615 plates to cover 184 square meter. Pretty simple. Okay. That's how you're supposed to uh, do all this calculation. That's it. Yeah. So I hope uh, up to here your concepts are clear. So uh, again, uh, we'll do the slab concreting also. It's pretty simple. For slab concreting, again, what you require? Same thing. Whatever you are done here, you know, everything you copy. Okay. I think I copied. Okay. I'll copy from here once again. Same thing you have to copy. There's no changes in that. copy and paste it here okay yeah so make this as uh, first floor slab concrete concrete quantity okay fine so now what i'll do very simple so since it's concrete quantity this will be cubic meter change it drag it in this way make it as cubic meter everywhere okay done after that uh I want this thing now. So length is done. Length is same. Breadth is also same. Here I want the depth of my slab. For the depth of the slab, you go back to the drawing. So here you won't get anything. In depth of the slab, they won't write here. You have to go to the slab schedule. See, here there is a schedule of slab given. Okay. They have given, they mentioned S1, S2, S2. Okay. There are two types of slab. One is one-way slab and two-way slab. Okay. All these things I've explained in my site engineer course. What is one-way slab? What is two-way slab? How do you put in the put that and i will not repeat that again you see the thickness of the slab given 150 150 150 that means throughout in all your slab your slab thickness is 150 so our task becomes very simple just come here and write 0 0.15 that's it okay I written 0 0.15 that is a depth or a thickness should I, should you call that depth or thickness it is thickness because it's slab slab it's we call it as thickness for beam we call it as a depth okay drag it up to here done but again this excel won't work out because when you did this uh, row formula you multiplied only 1.8 into 1.75 you can see this and this this you haven't multiplied so we'll have to change it now or you can do multiply 
by 0.15 now. Fine. 0 0.47. Now you just drag it everywhere. You get the total slab concrete quantity. Done. So you require how much? We'll verify one answer. 4.355 4.355 into 0 0.816 uh, into 0 0.15. 0 0.557 yeah correct fine no problem so total if you want to do your first floor slab total concrete quantity required is 27.69 okay but uh, when we order the concrete no, we'll do the concreting of your slab and the beam together so you can even write here first floor slab concrete quantity it's written so total if you want you can make one more column here i mean one one more row okay i'll merge it total First floor concrete quantity. Okay, this you can put in bracket like including the beam plus slab because we calculated separately. No, for beam we calculated separately for call for uh, slab we calculated for separately. That is why I'm writing this final note here. See all these things. It depends on you how you want to do it. Okay, this is what I practice. You can practice the same thing. If you have something else in your mind, you can do that also. Ultimately, answer should remain same and answer will come same because it is mathematics. So 2 plus 2 is 4. Either you do 1.5, whether you do 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, then also it is same. 1 plus 1 is also 2. Yeah. So what I'll do, I'll say equal to sign. I'll say equal to sign. First floor slab concrete quantity plus where is my beam concrete quantity? Beam was somewhere here initially total beam concrete quantity 13.98 enter. So totally if I want to do my totally if I want to do my first floor uh, this thing yeah totally if I want to do my first floor uh, slab concreting okay I require 41.67 let us say 42 cubic meter of a concrete if I get, I can finish my first floor slab work. Okay. Yeah. First floor concreting work can be finished. That's how it is. So we finished the concreting part. We finished the shuttering part. We finished the, this part. What is that uh, beam concreting and everything. So first floor, all the things, whatever we are supposed to do, everything has been done. So in the next lecture, we'll try to go for the second floor and so on. So we'll see you back in the next lecture. Thank you.